Okay, so the last thing we're going to do, I'll show his shell, is I'm quite happy with this rig. It's pretty much 100% complete, in my opinion. There's more things we could add to it. So we've got the ribbons down here if we want to add more def deformations, but for the majority of the animation, this is going to work quite well. We've got the IKF gear in there for the animator. Um, it's skinned quite well. We could always go ahead and start editing this skinning as we go along with the character. The spine's not going to squash and stretch as much, but if we wanted, we could add a blend shape in there, like we did with the arms and the antennas. Okay, so now we're going to go into how to reference this before you start animating. Because um, referencing is probably another golden rule of animation. Because if you reference your rig, it means at any point you can then go ahead and edit your rig and it, it'll still work with whatever animation you've done and especially if you're working on several shots so you could have 10 shots so 10 different scene files with this character being animated and if there was a problem with the skinning you won't want to go into every single 10 files uh, edit the skin weights 10 times because A, it take a long time and B, you won't be able to get the same result in every single file so if you're referencing it from the same file, so what is referencing? So if I bring up the project files, so this is the snail project, and inside scenes is where I've got obviously all the scenes. So usually what I'll do in here is I'll create a folder called animation, which is where I'll put all the files that I'm animating on. And inside here I'll create a folder called ref. ref files. So this is basically you know reference files. And inside here, for everything that I'm gonna use for the animation, you know the different characters, the different sets, they're all gonna be in their own, their each individual file. And then when I start animating, I'll just start from a blank scene and reference them in. And the beauty of that is um for instance if I wanted you know twenty different snails, I could re reference the same rig twenty times and then just applied slightly different textures we could add a few blend shapes in there you know to change subtle different things to give him a bit of mouth shape make one a bit more chubbier or a bit more skinnier you know different things like that to differentiate between the different snails but you could reuse the rig several times you don't have to duplicate the rig or remake a rig so all I'm going to do and before we actually do anything what I'll need to do is select all these curves here and make sure we don't have any animation in here because the thing about if we reference is if we start if we reference this rig and then start to try animate we're going to get an error popping up that will say um, for instance global IK and FK already has incoming connections and what those incoming connections are is the keys that are already set on here so make sure if you reference a rig all I'm going to do is select so I'm holding shift, left click and drag on the timeline where there's these keys and just right click delete because it's going to delete them there and I'll just go through these controls just double check on these so yeah there's no red in here another way is if you select one of these controls you can select any channels that have animation so select this control if I press S just to set a key I can select these channels, right click break connections and that's going to delete the keyframe. Just make sure you don't break connections to anything that's got constraint or connected to you know scripts scripts or nodes because that'll break that connection as well. Okay so we've got a clean file here. So what I'm going to do is just save this. I'm going to bring up back my um folder and I've saved this uh, barrier rig uh, 59 so I'm just actually going to get that Barry rig. I'm going to copy it and go into the animation ref files, paste it in there, and I'll just rename this uh, Barry rig 01. So I'll just rename it Barry. Okay, so with this, it's going to go to a new scene. 
and the reason why referencing is um, another reason why it's quite good is because we are loading in a rig the same way you load a texture so if you load in a texture through Maya it's basically taking an external um, image file and bringing that in and applying it to your mesh so whatever happens in Maya if you use an external program like Photoshop and edit that image and then you render in Maya Maya is only going to just look at that image and bring it in so whatever you've edited it with whatever you've done to that image Maya doesn't care it just brings it in and dumps it on what it should you know what material it should so the same is going to happen with um, referencing a rig basically you have this rig file in a separate folder and it, all that happens is this scene file here will just contain animation data so it will contain animation curves and all that happens is those curves uh, get applied to certain names so if you're animating the wrist it will obviously have the name of the wrist you know cc underscore left wrist dot translate y or something like that and then dot translate x and all that's going to happen is Maya will just take this rig pull it in and then apply those animation curves to the correct names so that means if for instance if I opened up Barry Rig um, I reskinned him you know I could change the skin I could pretty much remodel him and reskin him if I wanted and then if I've got loads of scenes with animation on them if I bring them in it's just, all that Maya's going to do is just look at this file bring it straight in so it doesn't care if it's been reskinned remodeled the only thing it does matter about is if you've renamed the control curves so you don't want if you started it in the rig after you've animated don't rename the control curves because the keyframe data in here is going to conflict it's not going to be able to find the correct name because you've renamed it so that's a case where you don't want to change parts of the rig but as far as it goes for skinning and doing anything else to the rig you can do what you want and it's going to work with the animation so here I'm just going to go file um, reference editor so the reference editor is where we're going to contain all these references and I'm just going to go to the plus sign to add a reference and that's going to bring up the navigation window and I'm just going to go back into the animation folder we made reference files and here you can see there's Barry 01 and I'll just click reference and what that's going to do is just load him in so now we can see everything's got a Barry prefix to it so Barry 01 CC we can hide these because we had the correct mesh and control curves we can start moving these about everything works as normal as if it was just working on that scene file we can keyframe it because we deleted the keys in the reference file but the good thing about this so I'll just move this aside is I can go to the plus sign and then add another Barry rig so now we've got Barry 02 and I can move these independently keyframe these independently do whatever I want independently so here we can start to add as many characters as we want and the advantage of this is these are referencing from the same file so much like a texture if I edited the skin weights inside this Barrio 1 file it is going to apply that to both these rigs so as long as I don't rename the animation so the animation curves so the control curves so, ben so basically setting keyframe here all that Maya is doing is it's assigning keyframes to this control curve so I can edit the rig do what I want with it it's not bothered what happens with the mesh all it's going to do is load up this file and then it's going to go hey this keyframe was Barry 2 global control so it's going to look at Barry 2 where's that name for the global control it's this curve here it's just going to apply the animation to it so this means you can reuse rigs quite well and it also means if you've got some characters that in the past I've used um, rigs for several different characters for different animations but I've used the same naming convention so they've all had cc underscore left wrist or one for example and that means I've actually been able to reuse walk cycles from similar characters 
you know that have similar anatomy so you could actually just open up the scene file where you've got that animation in there and just change the reference so in here I could double click on these and you can see you can actually so it's loading up C users James so it's just finding that file if I had a character so if say like I had a slug called Jeff and it was a different rig file it had slightly different skinning because it obviously doesn't have a shell but he has the same sort of antennas the same sort of and the same control curve names I could actually come in here rename this Jeff click reload it load Jeff in any animation that was originally assigned to this Barry snail it would then reassign to the cu control curves of Jeff because they've got the same name so that way we could preserve the animation so doing it this way means although we have the signing off of the rig so I've signed off on this rig everything's working the def deformations are looking good I'm happy about animating with this so I've signed off with this rig now so I can start animating but because we're using referencing we have the ability to go back a bit as well so you want to sign off on a rig get it 100% complete so it can work with the animation but still allow the ability to go back and add things so that way we're signing off but not completely we're still allowing self control to go back and edit the animation and this works really well because for example if I was animating for a week on this character and I've done quite a long animation and then I got to a point where his arm came over here and then I realized oh dear the skinning in this area is not working all I could do is open up his file his rig file so this reference file here edit the skinning and it would apply to all the animation I've done that week so that way referencing is going to you know drastically improve the flexibility of the rigging and animation pipeline